Hello and welcome to another special and fascinating episode of Dynamic Divas. At Dynamic Divas, our mission is to highlight the diverse and outstanding women shaping the landscape of technologies, especially in the field of Microsoft, like Dynamics 365 and Power Platform. Today, I'm very excited and honored to have Luna from Germany joining us today as a guest on our show. Luna has over 25 years of industry experience uh, and she's currently working as a technical specialist at Microsoft. However, she has been in the role of finance controller for more than 20 years. So she knows all the uh, depth of uh, finance processes and she has a very special connection uh, that is Denmark and FNO. So Denmark is known also known as the land of finance and operations and there uh, it's like the core of uh, FNO product. And we will hear more about that special and special connection with FNO and Denmark from Loan. And she also has uh, two very young dynamic sons who, who are a football coach as well as another one is electronical engineer and they are living in Denmark. And uh, she had some really great achievements like she once walked 100,000 steps in one day. Uh, so we will hear that also from you, Lone, and we would like to know what inspired you to do that. So without any further ado, uh, welcome, Lone, to the show. How are you doing today? Thank you, Rasira. It's great to be here. Um, I'm doing good. It's early mornings in Europe. Uh, looking forward to a new day of work here. Um, yes. Thank you for having I'm me. I'm tempted to ask, <laughs> is that a virtual background or is that a real background? Because I, I believe Germany looks a lot like similar to what your virtual background is. <laughs> this is actually, uh, this picture is taking, uh, taken like two, three kilometers from where I am right now. So uh, this wow. is actually like my backyard. <laughs> So it's it's nice, a nice place. Nice. It's really nice and different from Denmark, where we don't have the mountains. <laughs> That's good. It's very good to have such uh, a lovely view and close to nature. So, uh, Luna, tell us something about your journey in the field of IT so far and all the special connection between FNO and Denmark. Like you live there, you you live and breathe FNO, and you see how the culture is there when it comes to FNO. So please tell us about your journey and FNO culture in Denmark. Definitely. So I have a background from finance. Um, I worked in finance for 20 years before moving to IT. When I worked in finance, it was always uh, different, uh, doing different things, learning a lot of things, uh, structuring a lot of things. Um, and um, I changed jobs a lot because somehow uh, when, when you do that, you put things in, in structure. And then for me, it got boring. I have very big respect for the people, the some, for example, the accounts payable assistants that can do the same thing day in and day out. Uh, I tried to do that, but uh, it, it's not my thing. So I, I changed a lot and I learned a lot. And during one of the jobs, uh, we had an upgrade from an AX3.0 to AX 2009. And that's uh, my first experience where we did um, a migration. It was really interesting. And actually the consultants at that uh, time asked if I wanted to join them. Uh, that was not the right time for me. But later I worked um, as a finance controller in a big company in Denmark. It's uh, Vestas Offshore, uh, making the large uh, wind turbines, offshore wind turbines. Um, at Vestas or image I Vestas, we did an, a migration uh, from SAP to AX 2012. And I was from finance part uh, then responsible for the fixed assets at that time. And it was actually great fun. And at some time, the IT department asked me if I wanted to join them. And one of the guys asking me is still my best friend. <laughs> and he said at that time, I was asking too many questions in the finance department, so it would be better if I joined the IT department. So that was my first job in IT. It was internal IT. Um, and what was really good at that time is that I knew the business inside out. I knew all the processes. I knew the people. So that was an advantage for me. And at, that's actually the job where I think I learned the most. Uh, combining business and IT, doing uh, updates, uh, 
doing hotfixes, service windows, test management was also part of that. It was a great experience. We had around, I think, 25 in-house consultants uh, working on the different uh, legal entities of, of Vestas. It was really interesting. Um, at some point, I moved on to a partner in Denmark. It was called Daxiomatic at that time, a smaller partner. We were, when I started, around 50 employees. Uh, and I got a lot of learning on implementing finance operations at that time. It was also my first time with finance operations instead of the old, the older air expressions. And we got out to customers. I was uh, part of pre-sales, doing projects and also support. And I liked all three parts of it. Um, and at that time, I got in contact with uh, my colleague from now, Ludwig Reinhardt, who has also been very active. He was an MVP for finance for a lot of years. Now he's at Microsoft, and then you cannot be an MVP. Uh, so I got yeah. in contact with Ludwig. He was doing the Dynamics meetups for Germany. And I joined the meetups since I speak German. So I, I yeah. learned a lot from that. And I started writing with him. And we started out testing the tax service together. And when we did that, uh, we talked a lot. And at some point, Ludwig was like, it could be fun if we worked at Microsoft together. And then... Yeah. I think half a year after we both started at Microsoft. So that was a great experience. Also moving to Microsoft, I started in Dublin working for the SMC market, uh, the Danish market, but also helping for the other uh, parts of Europe. Uh, Microsoft has divided companies in uh, SMB, SMC and enterprise where enterprise is the bigger customer. So I started with the SMC market and for the Danish customers, and there's a lot of customers in Denmark using finance operations because that's, as you said, it's kind of our system. And yeah. uh, then uh, there was an open position in Germany and Ludwig called me and then I moved to Germany and worked with the enterprise nice. customers in Germany, which is which I'm doing now, uh, very big customers. We have some of the biggest customers in the world. So that was interesting. Also changing language to uh, to showing in German. <laughs> it was the fun. Nice. <laughs> the first time I did a demo was for a company using uh, finance operations as a tier two, very big company with over, I think they are around 100,000 employees. And uh, I, I was supposed to do it in Germany, in German, sorry. And I had this <laughs> on my one note, I had this one saying, this is called in English, it's called that in German, and it's called this in SAP. <laughs> so so right. it was really interesting, but it went well. And I said from the beginning, I'll do my best, but uh, there might be some words I only get in English. And they were really happy that I, I tried in German. So so that's how I ended up. You should have that time, huh? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, then I ended up in Germany, which is uh, where Denmark is finance and operations uh, country. Germany is an SAP country. So getting into customer conversations in Denmark, you would be presenting yourself and people would say, uh, my name is blah, blah, and my f I have been here since 25, or I have been here since 30 or something. And everyone would know that yes. you were talking about the old AX versions. And right. in Germany, going into customer uh, meetings, it's very different. I had one customer meeting where uh, the CIO was say, is, the first thing he said to me is like, why can you explain to me why I shouldn't choose SAP? So <laughs> it's uh, it's very different in Germany. Is that a normal yeah. conversation when people go to pub hopping? SAP was yeah. the FNO. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So yeah, as as you said, uh, finance and operations is from Denmark. Uh, the first uh, finance code was written in in 18, 1983 from the Damgård brothers, yeah. and was yeah, sold to Microsoft brothers, yes. in yeah exactly. And it was sold to Microsoft in two thousand and two, and then uh, it changed a little and changed some names also, and now it's called Dynamics Finance yeah. and Operations or dynamics right. finance and supply chain 
apply chain so, now. Yeah, if you talk yeah. to Anne Krupke, she'll correct correct you on that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I know we did. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, we yeah. we talked about it. Uh, we were at the Hanover Fair together, actually, Anna and yeah. me, and uh, and we also we did like these uh, icons we did before. So I, first, I was yeah. Dynamics Finance Operations, but then I changed. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no, that's uh, that is a lot of experience and a lot of projects and a lot of knowledge you are carrying, uh, Luna. Uh, like migrating from three to two thousand nine, it still feels so nostalgic. But it, at that time, it was a big thing because the way product was evolving. And after Microsoft uh, took the ownership of the product, they started infusing their own branding and integration with uh, excel and word documents a lot of new features were, int were introduced and then replacing sap with ax2012 again would have been a uh, very uh, challenging and tough thing to do but uh, at the end it becomes a great success story once we achieve that and then yeah uh, working for partners microsoft working with dr ludwig which is an honor in itself I yeah. would uh, love to work with him. It doesn't matter if he works for which company, but if you ever get a chance to work with him, definitely hand, all hands up. And yeah, uh, it, it's a lot of uh, knowledge you, you carry. So just tell me your views on, you have seen the evolution of finance and operation. And I also, when I talk to people who are looking at this product for the first time, try to explain them the history of this product, that it's not a new product. It has been in market since 1990s or 1980s, 2000s. Maybe you can correct me on that about the history, like when it originally was launched, I think it was uh, Excel was the programming language. 83, yeah. I was born in 82. <laughs> yeah. so, Excel so was from like, 1991. And actually there's still wow. customers in Denmark using Excel. Oh, really? Wow. Yes. You should create well, a, a museum in Denmark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There, there's books about it. You can also get them in English. Yeah. Right. I, I sometimes, you know, when I feel nostalgic, I search for like white paper from 2009 or AX4O and I still get them. Somehow people have uploaded on some websites and I download and try to read and see, oh, wow, how much we have changed now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. And, but some of the documentation from the older uh, systems, you can still use them. And some of them, uh, some of the documentation is actually really good. So, for example, the time right. and attendance module I have from 2000 <laughs> AX9, and that's still works for me. Still the same, yeah. yeah. <laughs> some things are still the same, like when, I, when we look at uh, the inventory reservation classes, or even though the advanced warehouse management has changed a lot of things, but Decor, invent sum, invent trans. Uh, they have gone through a bit of refactoring, but things like uh, your financial vouchers, the ledger voucher classes, and all your uh, workflows engine, number sequence engine. There is a, there are a lot of things which are still intact in the product and which are backbone of the product. So yeah. it, it's really great to see how this, that product has evolved from two tier to three tier to cloud and now totally a SaaS based product. And now it's coming closer to Power Platform. Yeah. Uh, so, what are your thoughts on it? Like how the product has evolved and the direction where it's going, getting more closer to Power Platform. So, to be to be totally honest, the first time I saw finance operations, uh, I came to the partner in Denmark, and I was thinking, "Oh my God, I'm happy. I'm not supposed to work with that because you see it first, and then you're like." <gasps> But then you get to know it and you get, there's always good things and bad things. So I, I saw a lot of um, good things. And what you need to um, figure out when the system is updated is what are actually the good things? Because there's always a reason behind the things that have been done. Um, so it does, yeah, there's always good things. And, and for finance operations, Compared to AX12, I think my favorite thing that changed in the beginning was the data management workspace. If you remember how we did the data import export framework yeah. in AX12 and AX9, yeah. what what has yes. what we have now in finance operations is so amazing, and that's also True. one of the reasons that we are so fast to roll out new legal entities. Uh, one of my colleagues right. at that time, the first uh, project I did at a partner, we were upgrading a customer from AX9 to finance operations. 
and it was a utility company. She had then created one legal entity and within one week, she had created the next 22, which would never have been done in AX12, but in finance and operations due to the data management, you can roll out so fast. That's uh, correct. Correct. And DMF opened that whole integration connectivity and all the patterns to connect with external systems. So yeah. all the data APIs, package APIs, it just has enabled the platform to be more, to bring more automation, more speed in place. And under the hood, you can do all the performance tuning and enable multi-threading for one particular entity. So it's really, it can go really deep in terms of uh, improving the performance and exposing that uh, layer of the product where you can do a lot of magic. Uh, yes. I That's also that what I the developers of... are saying that uh, doing integrations with finance and operations is a lot easier than, for example, with SAP. So it's, right. that's yeah. a big advantage. I think even the frameworks like Dual Right, uh, they use this as a backbone. Like when you do initial sync, it actually uses DMF projects under the hood and it creates a package and pushes the data in and out. And uh, also I saw in the latest demand planning application, which is actually built on Power Platform, but it uses DMF APIs to bring the uh, sales forecasts and all the historical sales data from FNO to demand planning. So I think DMF is definitely one of the key uh, and one of a very great framework, which became part of yeah. FNO and it's taking the product to the next level. Yeah. That's great. And, and all of the things Microsoft uh, is doing on the finance operations is they are, or most of them are often coming from the customer advisory boards where, where we listen to the customers, like what, what do you need? What are you using a lot of time? So um, we talked about it last week at Dynamics Minds. I was having a session with my colleague, uh, Marco Smith, who is our global black belt. And we talked about why Microsoft uh, is uh, evolving as it is at the moment. And one of the things is, of course, we want to optimize uh, everything. So talking to the customers, what is taking a long time at your uh, at your final uh, at your period close at the moment, and what can we do to try to speed this up and help and to get the resources to to do uh, things that will uh, like controlling, looking at the figures instead of manual input of things. So, um, yeah, that's, that's great. I'm very excited for the future. Um, tell me something about Dynamics Mind. I have seen a lot of amazing posts on LinkedIn where people are, they are just talking about the amazing experience they had, especially the opening keynote, the after parties, the sessions were great. You were there. So please tell us something about your experience of attending Dynamics Mind in person. Yeah, as as you know, I have uh, one of my passions is the community, also the Dynamics community, the knowledge sharing that we do, which I have been doing with, uh, with Ludwig since uh, Three years we have, uh, or I have been part of it since three years doing the Dynamics meetups in Germany. From that, I know a lot of other, uh, I call it colleagues, even though we are not working together, but uh, uh, other people with the same passion. And you get to know a lot of people online and going to Dynamics Minds, I think there was around uh, between 900 and 1000 participants. Uh, and it must be around 200 speakers or something. There was there were so many people and people that you have met online before, and then you get to know them in person, which was really interesting. And there were so many different uh, sessions, uh, and meeting the other passionate people was interesting. But uh, one of my favorite sessions was actually uh, the ones from Ludwig, who did a session with his son David. On, uh, on Minecraft uh, and Power yeah. Platform. So it has all different kinds of speakers. And David was, of course, the youngest speaker of Dynamics Minds, but it was amazing to see how he did it uh, and how, uh, how kids, uh, he was a natural doing that. He didn't have, you know, when adults uh, start doing uh, sessions and talking to people. When you work at Microsoft, you get used to talking a lot to a lot of people. But before that, I would be kind of nervous if I was speaking to a lot of people. And uh, David was just natural and uh, loving it. He was so amazing. So that was that was picking up genes from his father. Huh? Yes, he was, <laughs> he was really, on the right track. Yeah. No, so I, I read about the session. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then I did a session with uh, with Ulrike, uh, my previous colleague. She was working at Microsoft Sweden before, and now she's a solution architect at, at Capgemini. Last year at the European Summit in Lisbon, we did a Viking finance battle. So uh, that we did again this year, uh, and we when we show together, we usually go in system. So we showed live in system different topics. I showed, for example, the subscription billing and also the business performance analytics. I also showed live in system. There wasn't a lot of session where it was shown live in system, but that's that's the way we like to do it. So that was uh, we had a lot of fun with it. Yeah. There was also a lot of participants uh, watching the sessions. So that was great. That is so amazing. Uh, yeah, business performance analytics is one of the tools which is pretty new and catching a lot of attention and especially with its capability to allow users to create analytics on FRO data, I will have all sitting in Power Platform just brings a lot of value to the customers. It's really looking yeah. forward to that. Um, cool. Also, uh, I would like to touch base on one thing you mentioned, which is really striking me is that even though we know a lot of people in a dynamic space, even though we are not working, but we consider them as colleagues. I It's really such a great statement to make because we all face similar battles every day. We all are passionate about similar product. Uh, everyone is like, I, I like Dynamics community. Everyone is passionate about sharing knowledge and helping each other. So irrespective of the empl employers, like of course we have to keep in mind our NDAs and uh, the employer sensitivities. But uh, if you look from a product perspective, we all are learning and growing and breathing the same technology and same product so it's very important to have that connection that respect to other dynamics people even if they are working for other partner but uh, that connection is really important for any dynamics person to have uh, it yes. at the back of the mind so yeah really great uh, great comment there uh, luna uh, so tell me something about uh, ai and copilot uh, how is it impacting your day-to-day -day work and what are you most excited about <laughs> So since I work at Microsoft, I hear it oh, from no, when I get everything. up and <laughs> I go to bed. Sometimes it's uh, yes. I'm just thinking, can we just talk some finance <laughs> instead? But, okay, uh, let's talk about I, it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But um, no, what what is uh, is the same thing I said about the product when new updates is coming. You have to figure out what's the good parts of it. Uh, right now, we are struggling a little with uh, or waiting a lot to get it to Europe because it's uh, it's DA, uh, it's available in US and not in uh, in Europe yeah. or some parts of it. I have seen. Um, I'll mention the one that I always mention with my customers. I say if I have to mention one, uh, it is uh, some of the examples. Um, we have used some uh, AI and Copilot at Microsoft in the finance departments. And some of the things that we have used, we are also uh, trying to get it into uh, finance operations as, uh, as standard because we, we simply yeah. just listen to our own finance department, what is good and what is bad. And the one I like the most is the Copilot where you ask about uh, what's it called, unusual things. So, for example, when I was a finance controller doing month end closing, um, if I had Copilot that was trained at that time, I would be able to ask, uh, do we have any journals posted in unusual accounts? Do we have unusual uh, amounts? So looking for these unusual things in the in the system, which is um, which would take me back to then looking at finance operations. We have actually had uh, machine learning and AI in the system for over two years now, with the finance insights where you can uh, you can use it for uh, for looking at customer payments. For example, we don't uh, just look at the due dates, but we also look at the when the learning from when did customers pay before, so that we can make two different uh, views on it for the future. What is if it's on due date and what uh, how does it look if uh, the customers are paying as they are used to so that has been in the system for over two years um and i was doing some research on on sap uh, recently and i saw that one of the new things they mentioned was actually that and we had it in the system for over two years so i was like that's good we are we are doing good so 
yeah you machine know, learning is uh, is one of my favorite uh, things for that so yeah true yeah even before introduction of copilot we had so many ai and machine learning capabilities in fno yeah. product especially in the area of commerce where you have product recommendations uh, you have yes. uh, then you in the area of demand planning master yes, planning exactly. uh, yeah. we had financial insights payment predictions ledger and budget forecasting there were so many ai based tools in the product but now copilot will take it to the next level <laughs> but we are yeah, and the, ahead the of the machine learning for <laughs> yeah the, the yeah. machine learning for the demand planning uh, i know it's over two and a half years old because uh, i know one of my colleagues when i was working at the partner in denmark he was showing it to me doing it and i've been with microsoft two and a half year now so uh, so it's over two and a yeah. half years old but, uh, that's right. the that's right. good things <laughs> yeah it's all in the positive spirit who so yeah. Luna, uh sorry luna yeah uh sorry you were saying something no it, it was just uh the good things uh that we have to we have to look at all the good things and getting them out to the customers there's also a lot of customers um, complaining about things uh yeah. we should not forget that um what you have to remember is that um uh, Microsoft has the vision and the customers has the reality. And it's um, yeah. it's the most important at all to, to listen to them. And that's what we do in uh, in Germany or what we have been trying to do uh, in the, in the yeah. time I've been here. I've created some user groups with my customers so that they can get together because if, um, if customers are together and having the same issues, then it might be something yeah. that we need to look into. Uh, if it's not just one customer, Definitely. but it's several customers. And also they can yeah. learn from each other instead of, uh, as we do as colleagues learn from each other, the customers can also use some of the things. Uh, I know one of my customers uh, had been doing a, a development for, for some cost follow-up and the other one was, uh, was copying that. So no need yeah. to invent the wheel every time. <laughs> Right. No, that's so true. And when we do implementations, we have customers from a particular industry. We try to bring what we have done for other customers in the same industry yeah. so that we we solve the, the right problem with the right solution, which is already been proven and we can bring speed and agility to the implementation. Yeah. So true. Um, cool. So maybe uh, Luna, tell me something about uh, the, my last question to you is around uh, what are the typical challenges you have faced and how people can overcome them and what will be your tips to people who are starting their career in Dynamics 365? <laughs> I think I have, um, I think if, if being, what has helped me the most is that I have actually worked in finance before. So it's yeah. uh, one of my previous colleagues had uh, or has a niece who is studying a bachelor at the moment in finance and IT. And he was asking me, she wants to go into IT, what's your best advice? And my best advice would be to go out to a customer and get some experience just a couple of years before you move into IT, because the understanding of the business processes and having been with a customer makes you understand them in a different way. Uh, when we go out to the customers, you always have to listen to the customers and try to understand their reality. Uh, you think, even I thought after 20 years of uh, being a finance controller that I, I kind of knew it and how to do it, but then you get out to customers and they have different realities and you have to, to, to learn from them. So taking some time in the business before you move into IT is a really, really good idea. Um, it gives you something that you cannot learn as a consultant or developer or what you're going to be. That's, uh, that would be my best yeah. advice. And don't that's let that's anyone say you cannot do well. anything. So. True. Yeah. No, that's a great. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Luna, for sharing your insights and experiences with us. It has been uh, truly uh, an honor for me to uh, host you and uh, really grateful for the opportunity to learn from you. So yeah, any final comments? We are coming towards the end. Uh, oh, yes. You you mentioned walking 100,000 steps in a day. And yes. Tell us about that. Yes. <laughs> and that's actually a little also about uh, the person uh, that I am and maybe also the persons that my sons are. 
uh, it was uh, living in Denmark. Uh, my son was 17 or 18, and he's now 22, the youngest of them. Uh, it was the last weeks of his summer vacation, and I was asking him, is there anything you would like to do before uh, school starts again? And he was saying, yes, I want to walk 100,000 steps in one day. And I was looking at my watch and saying, we cannot make that today. So uh, what about Saturday? So uh, it was Tuesday and then we did it on Saturday. We got up at five in the morning and then we just walked until, uh, what was it? Between nine and 10 in the evening. And then I had walked wow. almost, almost 72 kilometers and he had 78. And it was just one step at a time. And that's also a lot, it's, it's uh, in your head that you are going to do it. Uh, when I was first thinking uh, 50,000 steps, that will be, that will be, when I've done that, it's just, but when you have done 50,000 steps, you are just thinking, oh my God, I need to do that again. <laughs> and it wasn't that physically hard. It was, it's just, it's mainly the, uh, in your head that you have to keep doing it. So, and that also oh. goes out to work. There's like, take the challenges and just try it out. So, wow, it's so relatable, huh? but yeah, it, I think it hundred thousand steps in a day is is will remind you the strength, your mental strength, and your get it done attitude as well. Like whenever you feel low, you can always say, "I have done that, so this is easy." <laughs> the the thing is, it's hard to beat, right? What are you going to do next? Yeah. Because a hundred and ten thousand is not that much. No, but it was a great experience. So. Yeah. No, that's so great to hear, and I'm sure this will inspire many more people to build that uh, get it done uh, attitude and uh, nail things rightly but yeah i'm sure it would have been a great experience and a great bonding time between you and your son walking hundred thousand steps in a day and this will go really long way cool all right then thanks luna uh, we'll close out the call now and for our audience stay tuned uh, hit the like button leave your comments and don't forget to subscribe to the channel thank, thank you. you for having me Thanks, Luna.